Hello, everyone. This is the MS Power User Podcast. This is the podcast for Microsoft enthusiasts and power users. We discuss the latest news from MSPowerUser.com about Microsoft, Windows, Surface, Xbox, uh, Windows Mobile, and all that fun stuff. Today, we talk about like uh, OneNote and things like that. My name is Vernon E.L. Smith, and I'm joined as usual by Andy Bennett. Andy, what's up, bud? Well, I bought into the highway robbery known as Crystal Pepsi, but <laughs> yeah, l- life's, life's going good. I can't deny it. There's, it sounds like there's a story there. Maybe you should elaborate what, what you mean, why you feel that way. Well, it's aside from the fancy packaging, it is basically 7-Up with a light Pepsi taste mix in being sold for the price of what you could get a 2-liter bottle for here. And this one is, let's see, this one's 20 ounces. Hmm. So, yeah. I mean, if you could get two, you can get a 2-liter bottle at some stores for the same price as... 20 ounces of crystal pepsi and yeah and that's actual regular pepsi you get in that two liter well what what do you think about the product itself i mean it's like it's seven up you can't really go wrong with it although i mean you could get seven up two liters of seven up for two dollars and it would be almost the exact same thing if you want to get that light pepsi taste you just Buy a thing of Pepsi and mix that in just slightly, and is, bam, you got Crystal Pepsi without the clear color. Is Seven Up not a PepsiCo product, or is that a I, Coca-Cola I, product? I can't, I can't, I can't remember for the life of me. Even though it was something that that was always in the house as a, when I was younger, it was something that my dad drank constantly. And it's, I kind of wonder uh, if uh, you know, if you heard about uh, the studies that uh, say that uh, some of the stuff in some of these drinks caused uh, cancer and whatnot well i i feel pretty strongly that aspartame for example is one uh quite bad thing that people yeah people and it's consume. like you know it's something that was always in the house i can't even remember the brand of it despite that i mean because i mean <clears throat> despite that i can't even remember the brand but uh yeah i think about that and then i think about some of the stuff that was in that and it <laughs> kind of scares me in retrospect well Still kind of on the topic, um, just to be a little bit fair to soda producers, uh, aspartame actually has been pulled out of, I don't know, some of the big bigger names. I don't know if it's Pepsi or Coke or like whatever, but some yeah. of the colas. So we're at least, uh, you know, recognizing things. It's kind of interesting that, you know, years ago, you could pick any any area of, of life, that there was a thing back then that we thought was great, and now... We we know it's bad. You know this happens all the time. You know, I wonder yeah. if the, you know. I wonder if that's going to happen with any tech crazes. You know, you know, for a long time people have been concerned that cell phones are bad for people's brains and things like that because you know the the waves are going through. And uh, lately, you know, last few years, I really haven't heard anyone say that say it one yeah, way think, or the other. I think that's a reverse situation. Whereas with some of these products, you'll hear that they're good and fine for you, and they'll be of course bad well this is one you hear that is bad for you in the end it turns out being just okay well i'm not entirely convinced that we will once once we know all the facts about cellular you know basically the 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 frequencies the wave waves um you know i don't think we'll be as happy with it as we are right now but i i really don't know you know who who knows yeah um the thing on the the uh the soda (laughs) my wife uh she heard that oh you know you can clean your toilet with with coca-cola and so i was going to the store and, and she was like hey we're out of we're out of uh, toilet bowl cleaner she's like well go pick up some coca-cola I'm like well <laughs> okay this could work but there's also toilet bowl cleaner which is designed for this and probably works just as well or better than coca-cola so we didn't we didn't buy coke again we uh we bought toilet bowl cleaner Anyways, I think it's probably about time that we get moving on towards our <laughs> actual stories because you know this isn't the uh, the soda drinker power user podcast. This is, of course, hey, MS power it, user podcast. It sure could be. It sure could be. It, it, so. That that might be fun, <laughs> but no, <laughs> we better not. Yeah. All right. So one of the favorite things 
that uh, people who listen to this podcast are involved with with Microsoft. Is that a full sentence there? Maybe too much of one. I don't, I don't know. People, I don't if know. you're listening to this podcast, you are probably a Windows Insider. And, of course, there's another Windows Insider build out for PC and and um, to my, yeah. I'm not actually sure it's, if it's on mobile. It's 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 on mobile. Okay, and it's uh it's something that brings it brings a just like one a new feature in that's actually announced. There's some other hidden stuff in there that we can get into later, but the main thing it does that's public is that it brings download updates from other PCs to Insider Builds. This is something that's been in regular builds for a long, long time. If you were on the production ring, you've had this for boy, like forever, right? It says that it was originally added in November, but I feel like it's been longer than that. This has been talked see, about for a long time, and uh, it was a little bit vague as to when it was actually available, when it was actually happening, even if it was, I think to some extent, it was like uh, a differentiation between w- regular Windows 10 and Windows 10 Pro. I really don't remember what that differentiation was, yeah. the difference, but there was some, um, it wasn't just across the board. That that everyone had this maybe. capability. Yeah, that, that may, maybe that was it then, that it was brought to everyone in November. But anyways, to explain what this feature is, it's basically your PC isn't the only one downloading the update. Other, up, other PCs on your network or other PCs on the internet that are downloading that update will help you download that update. You'll get bits from multiple places instead of just Windows Update, which helps with server stress and download speed and is something that I'm too paranoid to turn on basically yeah i mean I, i'm fine with it but i really don't have enough pcs laying around here to to make it worthwhile i guess and and i don't usually have them on all the time so um whatever yeah it's it's a it, I, my opinion of it is very m- minor i don't have a strong opinion of it it's just eh, it's yeah it's a feature okay yeah did we even mention the build number uh, not yet, I guess. This is 14915. Oh, That's, uh, of course, fast ring. If you're on the slow ring I, or uh, release build, I think you're on 14393, um, which is what I'm back on personally myself now, but on the mobile, yeah. on the mobile uh, I should say. But Yeah. And so this build, this fixes a lot of issues. I mean, there's too many to really go into here, but... There's a lot of small changes. There are some larger fixes, which we can talk about as soon as the list loads. <laughs> right. So some of the improvements and fixes, they fix the issue with un- being unable to use the power button on the start menu, which, uh, that's big. That's pretty important. Yeah. I mean, otherwise you'd have to use the power user menu with Windows Plus X. Then... Fixed the issue causing Cortana's text-to-speech capabilities to not work, meaning that at long last, you can hear Cortana's voice tell you a joke again. <laughs> yep. Easily the most important feature of Windows 10. It it actually... <laughs> I mean, to joke about that... Yeah, the joke... Wow. Well, to joke about getting the joke from Cortana, you know, that's kind of a little gimmicky thing, but... Not having voice capabilities with Cortana is actually pretty substantial. And I was actually talking to someone today about a, uh, I'll call them a civilian, uh, who who I explained the use case scenario for Cortana and how I use it quite a bit and how it's kind of that that balance between Google Now, which is um, pretty much straight up search and some some uh, helpful features, you know, like uh, assistant, virtual assistant things, obviously, and Siri, which is almost entirely virtual assistant, but a rather poor one, you know, while it's balancing the in between there. Um, I think we're going to talk a bit more about uh, Cortana later on in a di- quite different, um, I'm not going to give it away, but we'll talk about it later. Um, so yeah, Cortana voice interaction is back, and that's obviously a good thing. This is a lengthy list, but basically almost everything in here from last week is fixed. You'll see stuff like a, you can now change your ring settings again, and uh, compatibility issues are fixed. Connect flyout is updated so that the clickable area for each device listed now spans across the full width of the flyout. One of my There's, one of my favorites here is that on the PC, 
if in if you used if you used the French language on the PC, when you had an update, it would say your phone is up to date on the PC, and they fix that now. So it should nice. say your PC is up to date. So, like I I love how these. I mean, yeah, I I don't know how these bugs happen. You know, obviously there's humans on the back end. You know that that configure that make. Uh, you know, there, there's errors to be made, but it's just so interesting. Some of these yeah. bugs. Yeah. Um, with some, with some of it, I think it's just you know, like for example, that uh, your P, your phone is up to date on PC. That one's, I think it's just a case of either merging a string or a human issue when translating stuff. Mm-hmm. And then, then the, as for known issues for PC, the, our favorite bug just keeps on coming back. You Adobe Acrobat Reader crashes when you try to launch it. <laughs> this has been an issue for what? Three or four builds. You know, it actually feels like a feature of Adobe because it's just... Um, it's a feature yeah. that tells you to use something better. <laughs> yeah. I, I can I can already see the conspiracy headlines now. Microsoft tries to force out competing PDF readers, intentionally <laughs> breaks Adobe Reader. If they actually cared about compatibility, it would be fixed by now. Yeah. Then, then the X-Files pl- theme will play. You know, there's... Uh, Whatever. It's just crazy how Google is so competitive in some ways. Um, you know, in, in, in one might say immoral ways, one could argue that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Microsoft gets all the flack right now. Just because they have a new yeah. operating system, they're getting a lot of um, whatever. We're a little bit partial, yeah. obviously. I, I, I Personally, I feel like they should both get the flack, really. Mm. Just like... For every every single company that gives me a notification telling me to change X, Y, or Z to their product from another company's product, it's just like, guys, please, when I say no, I mean, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. And neither one seems to get it. No means no. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, though, a big issue here that you will want to know is that if you have a Surface Pro 1 or a Surface Pro 2 running Insider Builds, and you are not upgraded to this latest build yet, you're going to want to not upgrade. Get off fastering, get back to slow or release or whatever, because this build will cause Wi-Fi issues on your Surface Pro 1 or 2. I actually, uh, excuse me, I actually do wonder how many people are still using their Surface Pro 1 or Surface Pro 2, and especially with Insider builds. Hmm, that's a good question. Well, I had no reason to get rid of my Surface, which of course was RT. I never had a um, the full full Surface, big Windows for the uh, model. But I only got rid of it because I had cash incentive, which would help me buy the next thing that I wanted. Um, I really don't get rid of technology, and yeah, I, me neither. The really, older I... something gets, the more likely. It is, then I'm going to try, um, you know, beta software on it just in general. So I think there's still a lot of people that have them. It's hmm. just that they're not, um, I don't know. I, 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 I do wonder. I guess that's a really good question. I, I shouldn't have spoke up yeah. if I didn't have an answer. <laughs> I don't worry. Gotta admit, I do kind of want to uh, get a Surface RT sometime just for the sake of novelty. But anyways, let's see. I, I actually wish I hadn't gotten rid of it. But yeah. But, you know, moving on to the hidden changes we mentioned earlier, Microsoft is working on integrating a feature like Flux into Windows 10. And for those who aren't familiar, Flux is a program that will change your monitor brightness depending on the time of day. Uh, Fernand, do you want to talk about this? Well, um, I don't stare at my my home PC as much as as some people do. Um, I go to dark mode whenever I can just because I enjoy it more. I don't feel the eye strain occasionally like on my work pc i have turned down the brightness just just a little bit but i think that overall the the idea the concept of making computer monitors better for for people's eyes i mean there's two things the monitors themselves the technology can change improve to be less um just less bad for you let's go with that uh but also going with excuse me going with with software that is going to obviously keep the brightness down. It's going to make it more aesthetically pleasing and um, visually, quite you know, like optically better for you. Is brilliant. Why would we not want to do this? This is what we should be doing. In in, in being in the safety profession, um, 
safety profession myself, we we want our workstations to be ergonomically sound or, you know, to for us to be in good ergonomic shape. In ergonomics, we normally think about the position of our back and how our, our wrists and hands uh, line up in, into their work positions. But also, uh, we need to think about our eyes and the d- direction where we're aiming um, our head and, and things like that. But it is also taking care of our bodies like the, the eye itself. So long story short or whatever, I think it's great. I mean, I think it, it needs to happen to where we're, we're having it less bright, but also... Uh, like blue light reduction is something that it talks about in here and really you should just go to the article because there's a lot of cool information about how of what they're doing here with this um, flux like feature and um, yeah, the, the name great. of the feature itself is ca- just called blue right blue light reduction and it has both manual and automatic settings and personally I don't really care for turning some of these features on when they you know touch your monitor because this particular one I have is so touchy, I just had to modify it for days to uh, get the colors all right. But if I didn't, I would probably use such a feature. Nice. Might end up using it on a laptop or something, because I've complained about my eyes getting nuked at midnight when using OneNote before. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Moving on, this... Was it last night? I think you messaged me on Skype. Said you were real excited about one particular thing you were you were dealing with, and I was not very awake when I first read it. And it said something about an Android desktop, and I did a bit of a double take. You want to elaborate on this? Yeah, this is one that isn't particularly just a story, but rather something that's really interesting to me because it's something that highlights both the highs and lows. Actually, not even lows. This highlights the highs of why Microsoft made the universal Windows platform and what their end goal was supposed to be. Obviously, you don't really see the level of universal support Microsoft had hoped for. There is some, and you can't deny that it is getting support but it's not getting the level they had intended for, at least not yet. That might change in the future, as always, of course. But Remix OS is desktopified Android. It was first introduced to the world with a Surface clone made by some former Google employees, and the operating system is Android, but it's tailored to a desktop experience and feels a lot like Windows. So I... So, so hold, hold on, let me, okay. let me pause you for a second. When I think of desktop... Windows, I don't think of UWP. I don't think of apps. I think of a desktop program. So are you, um, maybe you want to just dig a little bit deeper in this, at least for my sake, because I'm missing out. I'm missing Well, out. I, I, I got to admit that while on a technical level, they are two different things to a user, it's the same. You click an icon, it opens a window. That window has the contents of a program inside. Oh, okay. That's fair. Yeah, and so Remix OS, of course, it runs Android apps. And Android apps, they, it's, the majority of them do not scale well to desktop usage, and that is the biggest issue with Remix OS. You have apps that are gigantic, apps that are just full width, apps that glitch out when resized, and you just sit there and think, okay, this is exactly why Microsoft did what they did. And their goal was to have, and when... Remix OS is at its best, hilariously, is using Microsoft's Android apps because, go figure, they are the ones that work the best on a desktop form factor. That's really interesting. That's, hmm, that's very interesting. Yeah, because, like, you know, even Microsoft Word's tablet version, that one looks almost identical to the PC one when you put it at a certain size. Mm-hmm. You'll find that certain elements of it are larger, and it is missing a few features. Yes, but it's almost identical. I really, then, well, okay, I really just do love the direction they're going. So much of what Microsoft is doing is almost, you know, we can kind of say that they're predicting the future. You know, like uh, this is what we expect things to be like in the future. Yeah. Just think about like Star Trek, right? Just to just to use a, a generic or general analogy there what that will be like. But also, Microsoft is shaping the future, obviously. And to tie it back to the Insider program, which I seem to, by default, pretty much every episode, 
it's so cool that we insiders are part of this, quite literally helping or influencing Microsoft's changing of the future. That's uh, mm-hmm. interesting if you look at it real, you know, philosophically, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, you know, to, I guess to get back to my main point, since. Yeah, I know. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't worry. It's like, you know, Microsoft has a reason for all these things. I mean, it, I, it, it's hard at times to not look at this and go, oh boy, it's, it feels like, you know, the universal stuff's failed since mobiles has, has its issues. I mean, it's, but the thing is, they have their reasons for this. I mean, you look at all the other platforms it's running on that's not mobile, and then you look at running Android apps on different form factors. I've run Android apps on TVs. I've run them on desktops. I've run them on phones. I've run them on tablets. It can be a very iffy form factor on anything that isn't a phone or a tablet. And the universal app goal is to have something that works on, you know, everything. And it's a very good goal, and you can see why Microsoft's doing it. I guess that's basically my main point. You just look at all their platforms, look at all these apps, and it's good. Yeah. Cool. This next headline... I will read out because I don't quite understand this. PlayStation Now is now available for Windows. Uh, so PlayStation Now is their, well, their service, obviously. Why don't you elaborate on this, Andy, because I yeah. it's over my head. I, I think I might have it, mentioned it a couple of weeks ago when they announced that it was coming to Windows. But anyways, uh, it's basically Netflix for video games, which this is starting to sound a lot fam- very familiar. I'm pretty sure I did explain this a few weeks ago, but either way. There's still a lot of people getting it confused with streaming because they hear game streaming and they think, okay, Xbox One to Windows 10 streaming. Well, no, this isn't it. That's free and is only for games you own. This is a monthly service where you hook up a controller to your PC, which this does work with Xbox controllers, amazingly. I tried it with a PlayStation 3 controller. It didn't work, but an Xbox 360 one worked just fine go figure and uh you choose the game you want to play in a very netflixy user interface and it, it starts up your computer isn't the one doing the computing it's a playstation 3 in some data center somewhere and you get to enjoy the game and it's nice it's got a seven day trial available it's netflix for games and you won't it means that you won't have to buy a playstation 3 to play uncharted which is what all the people i know who are using it are using it for Mm-hmm. Hmm. so yeah well it's interesting to see um what playstation is doing you know sony is doing that um mirrors competes differentiates uh between this is one this is one that actually was happening before uh xbox to pc streaming although when that was doing it it was only on sony platforms it's been exclusive to the playstation 3 vita and 4 for a year or two now so that's just something to keep in mind. But yeah, it's finally coming to Windows. More people get to enjoy something for a cheaper price than they would ha- have otherwise. Hmm. And that's all that matters in the end, I guess. Yeah. This next one, this next story is really the opposite of enjoyment, though, which is why I'm throwing it over to Vernon. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So He's ev- better at complaining than I am. I guess I guess I've got that uh, lucky, lucky uh, listeners that get to... Uh... Here we complain. Facebook. Okay, everyone has a Facebook account, right? Like if you if you don't have a Facebook account, you could you can message me and bother me and say I don't have a Facebook account. I know there's a few people that exist out there. But most people have Facebook and along with that comes Facebook messaging, Messenger. And oh my goodness, I I I love that it's so universal. I love that everyone if if I need to get a hold of somebody who I haven't talked to in about 15 years, I can probably find them. I can message them on Facebook Messenger cuz I probably can find them as a, you know, classmate on Facebook and whatever. That's kind of nice. It is it is my yellow pages or white pages, I should say. To coin a, you know, to use a phrase from a previous century. But Facebook Messenger <laughs> is not available in the store right now. Uh, I don't know what happened. Um, I don't really care. But it, it neither for the PC, you know, neither version of the app is available right now, and I don't really know whatever. But um, 
Yeah, and so some people are very bothered by this. Other people, it's a great sigh of relief, of course. And definitely the mobile batteries. Uh, if someone is not using Facebook Messenger, your battery life will last longer. That's for certain. Do, um, I don't even know, Andy. Do you have? Do you use Facebook? You I, I I do. Although I I admit I don't really use Messenger. I mean, I'll use it once or twice in the browser. You know, you mentioned Messenger being universal. I see when it comes to the app, the universal side I see is how people dislike it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but but it is a, a universal, almost like a universal um, communication language, you know, way of communicating. So yeah, universal communication language like this sucks. <laughs> yeah, something we can all band together on. But to yeah. be to to be fair, <laughs> uh, I think the well, I guess the emojis and the little stickers, especially the stickers, are kind of interesting. I'll admit that my wife and I have had little sticker contests, try to come up with the goofiest or weirdest stickers to send back at each other. And, um, well, I don't know if that means I'm, I'm adapting and growing and moving forward or that I'm taking on the mentality of my children. I really don't know. Well, my, well, my little brother, and this is online, not Facebook, on any mess, though, really, I guess it would apply to any messenger with stickers. I wake up in the morning, my phone's beeping, I turn it on, take a look, and it's all messages from him, and every single one is just the same repeated sticker in line. <laughs> I can scroll for a solid 30 seconds at top speed, There's, and he goes at it for like maybe two or three hours at times. <laughs> it's like, it's just like the one bear mascot from line. Over and over. Maybe the, occasionally there's a couple no smoking signs thrown in. I don't get the message thrown t- that he's trying to send there. That's funny. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Messen- though the messenger, the hate I see for it is just really mostly the app for Windows 10. Um, I guess I didn't, I don't use it on the, on the desktop that way. I guess I don't know. Or I should yeah, see it's I, so weird. Like I, I think of my desktop workstation i should call it my desk workstation and then there's the start menu so you know uh space that you're in on the pc and there's also the traditional desktop with your stupid little shortcuts and stuff that people fill up sometimes <laughs> anyway so this next one andy i gotta go back to the right page here if i'm doing, looking at this right so did we not I remember talking about this. Did we not? We we did. We did talk about this, but it's. uh, Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's fine then. Continue. Elaborate on it or add to it. So yeah, this is Microsoft Rewards because it appears that Microsoft Rewards is rolling out now. Earlier today, I had it. My siblings and mother didn't have it, and now my mother's gotten it a couple of hours ago. This was way after I posted the article, but. Microsoft Rewards seems to be rolling out, and it has a totally revamped design from Bing Rewards, and some changes we talked about when we discussed it previously, like every single cost of a reward and every single credit is now multiplied by 10, when you would get two searches for, I mean, you would get one credit for every two searches, now you get 10 for every two. I don't really get the change, as it doesn't seem to change much, but whatever. Well, to be honest with you, it almost makes it look like every reward is just further away. Well, because we're used to the older um, the older rate of accruing them. But what's really odd, because I didn't realize it was getting rolled out yet, earlier today I know that I had 462 Bing points or Bing credits. And now I have, I look at the app on my phone, and I have 4615 so that's the only part that has updated on the Bing Rewards app. At least I haven't tried it on the web. Oh, yeah. That, that 15 does seem to be the biggest part of the chains where they, with the extra digit, is that now every one search is five credits, which, you know, it's basically half a credit in the old system. You know, that's, Makes, you know that is okay, actually on. one way that you're gaining. I'm looking, I was looking for the, you know, silver lining here. Not to be pessimistic, but, you know, before you'd have to search, you know, if you just did one search, it's not a point. You'd have to do two searches and you get that whole That's point. True. That's and true. And in this way, if, you you know, your typical two searches gets you, well, one, uh, 10 points, I should say, one actually gets you five points. And 
um, I guess that's only relevant if you search one or three or five times a day or whatever, you know, in that increment. Um, yeah, I never I never really thought of that. That's that's a good idea, actually. So at least every day you have a 50 50 chance of getting five extra points. So well, maybe we maybe all, not ex maybe not all, extra. We can all but rather in that. if you end one day on an odd note, you'll get an extra point on the next day with one less search. I don't think it rolls over. Um, I, it, uh, I mean, I can't believe we're even nitpicking this. But I, uh, yeah, I get, I get. I think we kind of wandered into a weird land where <laughs> I was already here. You Microsoft, me. <laughs> Microsoft rewards analysts. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad you but, put it in here and then yeah. you talked about it more. I, anyway, I, so the new the new information about it is that it's the previously Bing Rewards, of course, as it was part of Bing, was on a Bing page. Now that it's Microsoft Rewards. You can actually find this in your Microsoft account uh, panel, management, options, whatever you call it. Alongside your account information, you just go to rewards, or you can still get to it through the usual way on the Bing homepage by clicking the rewards medallion, then see all rewards or options or whatever. And it's got a totally new design. It not only fits in with the Windows 10 design language, as you'll see Metro Design Language 2 icons, as they're called, MDL2, on tile tiles that look like live tiles even if they're not mm -hmm. you'll find the familiar blue microsoft account bar at the top of the page it's just merged merged with another microsoft service and no longer stands out on its own to some that's a bad thing but in but it fits with microsoft's current mo everything is one thing everything is consistent unless it's the windows desktop <laughs> and Everything fits together. It's like a big bunch of puzzle pieces. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. And so this next one is really one for both of us, but I think I'll let you cover the main thing, and then we can both have thoughts at the end. Yeah, well, anyway, we use OneNote for uh, our, our show show notes, you know, the, the things we're going to talk about. And I use OneNote in for many reasons, in many ways, uh, my personal life and also for work. I use OneNote quite a bit. It shares very well. I mean, everyone, pretty much everyone knows that this is a core Microsoft app. At least I would consider it a core app. And uh, a few years ago, they actually made it free to everyone. So even the full uh, OneNote, basically you can get a OneNote experience if even if you pay Microsoft no money at all, I mean you can have an Android app and install the free OneNote uh, exp, um, app, or also on the web you can be using Chrome and go to. I suppose technically you do need a Microsoft account probably to have uh, the OneNote web experience, and uh, you would to have an account you would get free storage. You know is where you would. Uh, save Actually, this, I but. think you I think you need a Microsoft account to use the free OneNote at all. Um, you know, that's a good point, perhaps. Um, the files have to be saved somewhere. That's fair. Yeah, so on Android, yeah, there you go. So on Android, you would, you know, need a place for it to be stored. So that makes sense. And for the longest time, people had, you know, uh, this mobile app, which was also blown up to be the, just call it the OneNote app on a on big Windows. But also there was the, the Office program, the, the traditional way of thinking of it, the full fledged, you dig in deep, all the every feature being there, and that was part of the Office suite for, um, you know, part of Office 365 or 2016 or whatever. And so, and that was paid for, and now that's actually actually, actually just a correction, the Office 2016 uh, Office app that is available for free as well. Uh, Correct. I was actually about to say that, but that it used to be part of the office suite, and now that in itself is also separate. It's also free. So OneNote is completely free. They have multiple different apps, but even on the traditional on your on big Windows on Windows 10, there's the two apps, and there was a it was a Reddit right an AMA or something, in which yeah they had a question and answer session, and they were they were asked about the difference between um, kind of the, the quote-unquote confusion between the two apps on Windows. And I thought their answer was actually quite interesting because I did not have that opinion, or at least I was not under that impression. What are they, what, what are they telling us here, Andy? 
They say that in listening to user feedback, we found that even though the Win32 version of OneNote is incredibly powerful, many users, and new users in, par new, new users in particular, found it difficult to use. So our goal for the Windows 10 app is to bring in the most valuable features from the classic OneNote app while delivering a more simple and pleasant user experience for users overall, and gonna be honest here, that kind of scares me. If they're going to, that is, if they're going to make changes to the Win32 Win app. Yeah. Well, I also got it as, well, yeah, that's what I mean. They're taking away, they're deprecating or simplifying or whatever, this full-fledged powerhouse program, which I'm very happy with, which I use quite a bit, I mean, all the time. I, I, and, I, I, I do kind of think that it means that they're just going to update the Windows 10 app to have all the features of the Win32 but one, but the thing is, what happens then? Are you just going to depreciate and shut down the app? Because if so, that would, uh, wow, I can't, you know, I can't use the language to describe that on this show. Yeah, because of all the things that I use of Microsoft's, I mean, OneDrive I use in the background. I don't actively go play in there. Outlook I absolutely use all the time, but to be honest, I think of that as an enterprise thing. Um, you know, I use that tons, but OneNote is almost like the first volunt it's at the top of my voluntary list to use, if you think of it that way. Mm. Um, Outlook I have to use for work, and I'm not dissatisfied with it, but um, not everyone at my job uses OneNote. I do, and I am a champion for it. I mean, like I... I um, laud its values, you know, like how, how good it is. And, um, yeah, if they, if they start flipping things around for me with this, I will be, um, I will be flipping some tables or, you know, whatever. Yeah. I, and it's like, you know, really, if you want to avoid user confusion with the Win32 version and the uni universal version, I think the simplest thing to do is to either, well, not make the Win32 version paid, that, that would cause a storm with some people let's not, rather not just many. i don't think it would i mean the, me the media would blow it out of proportion yes. let's be honest here correct i think a, the easiest route would be rename the classic version one note professional yes it's as easy as that you add one more one word to the name suddenly people know this is hard mode they <laughs> yeah. know that <laughs> Yeah, and include a note on the page saying, looking for an easier way to use OneNote? Well, we got a version for Windows 10 that's just for you. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest solution to it. You don't real. I mean, I'm all for changes to the universal version. It's just that I do not want anything to happen to this Win32 one. And it's like, would they do it? I don't know. Well, It is technically part of the Office suite. But it's the free part of the office suite. They're not making any money on it. It's pulling people in. That's great. It, yeah. It, but it's uh, it's excuse me. It's not an active um, revenue stream for them. Yeah, unless you count user data or people who might buy into the rest of Office when they find out about just OneNote. Well, exactly. I mean, it's definitely that um, <laughs> that gate gateway drug <laughs> but it's yeah. um when you said what they're getting out of it as far as user data what user data are they taking that would be valuable do you think maybe i'm just missing something here maybe it's much less monetary value much more user experience value okay yeah because you know i'm i would not be shocked to find out that hey Microsoft does what they do with all their other products. They see how users use them and find ways to improve them. I mean, like, that's kind of what they say right here, you know. They're looking at how people use it and figuring out how they can improve it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, speaking of notes, Vernon, do you have you ever put notes on a fridge door? <laughs> uh, I have occasionally. My wife does even more so. And... um with this, this next story, this is, yeah, with this, this next story, <laughs> you might be able to use OneNote to put your notes on the fridge door or the Sticky Notes app, which is better for that purpose. But shh. <laughs> you know what? I would absolutely use OneNote on my refrigerator. And I know my family would too. My daughter, 16-year-old daughter uses OneNote. My wife uses OneNote. Uh, we share notes, you know, um, 
shared notes that you know shopping lists and and all types of things things we need to keep track of we use it quite a bit and the refrigerator is kind of a family hub depending on the family dynamic and whatever but that's where people go to I don't know what to call it. Like it's a it's this it's a center hub kind of. Also, yeah. For for work, you've got the water cooler. For the family, you have the fridge. Mostly because there's food in there, and that's always important. Yeah. But, but to have what we're getting at here is that there is a um, LG just uh, announced or showcased this uh, this refrigerator with a, a touch interface on it, which runs full Windows 10. In, in the fridge door, the door on the right side here. Go to the article on, at mspoweruser.com, obviously, and see some yeah, of the yeah, videos. Do the, yeah, uh, do that if you want to see the videos and pictures. And uh, Vernon, I just want to ask, if desktop Windows is big Windows, is this slightly mo- smaller but still big Windows or bigger but still big Windows? It's bigger than life. Uh, what, <laughs> <laughs> what this is is basically a, a vertical display. Um, it's not, it's, it looks like it's even taller than nine by 16. looks like it's nine by 22 or seven by, I don't know, whatever. It's quite vertical, which is odd because I can see so many opportunity for playing video on this display, which of course would be the, the ultimate sacrilege of playing back vertical video. (laughs) Um, well, I mean, a fridge door is vertical focused in most cases yeah so this that's really about the only thing i'm I'm knocking it for i think it's really really interesting it's very cool the display itself obviously a touch display but it's also translucent so you could see through it and you can see the food behind there which i really don't know why i mean i don't know what people are really getting out of that because i can't think of many refrigerators that are you know you can see through right now anyway they exist but it's not really a big deal um, I, but I think it is very, it's it's an interesting, I'll call it a gimmick, I guess. To, to you can finally see the little man who shuts the light off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you could tell if the light shuts off when the door closes. Um, but this is a great kitchen companion because not only is this Windows 10 where you could play YouTube or you could stream Pandora, obviously you need, a, you know, speakers, but that would not be a problem. Um, I think those in itself are huge. It's just a great opportunity for a kitchen companion, but you have Cortana. Cortana built in there, especially if it was audible, you know, the hey space, uh, what do, oh crap, what do we always say? Something, hey bl- blank Cortana. Um, I, I bet that uh, still activated it on your end. Not in this case. Uh, okay. It does sometimes, but, but having that saying, remind me to pick up milk or whatever, all these things, which Cortana is everywhere and is absolutely awesome. And this is the one of the perfect places for it because you don't have to necessarily interact with it with a keyboard. Now you could easily have a keyboard. You could have how I would do it at my home. I would have this wireless keyboard, Bluetooth, obviously. I would put a little Velcro piece on there and just stick it to the side of the fridge if people need it. And when you when you need to type something, you could just grab it that way. Otherwise, of course, you can type on the display. You could use voice which would be almost entirely what you do with this thing and touch, okay, play video, go right to your video app or right to the web. And, um, you know, I think one of the coolest things about this is that I, that if it does release, there is going to be at least one guy out there who is probably going to be me someday when I have money, who is going to use a kitchen fridge as their main computer. I'm, I'm close to that. (laughs) It would not be, it would not be my main computer, but it would probably be the family's main computer if we had. Because I've yeah, talked, maybe. I've talked about it before. And what do you norm? What do you actually use a a communal uh, computer for? Basically, in this day and age, it's just for playing back content, just uh, reading back whatever YouTube and Pandora or like whatever. And that's what a kitchen computer or Netflix. What a kitchen computer would be for us, like an all-in-one. Well, aside from the issue with the display, you wouldn't really play net back Netflix much. But uh, this could be this would this would work in my house. This would be useful. We would not spend the money on it. I didn't even bought. I didn't even was afraid to see what they were charging for this thing. But a, I, 
Yeah. If if that were sold, I would expect it to uh, be some pretty ludicrous prices. But I think it's just a really good opportunity to showcase Cortana and what it can do and how it ties across, you know, all all devices. You know, people in a family don't have to be using a Windows phone for this to be meaningful, to be helpful to them. Um, now, I'm kind of interested to see how they might w work this with multiple um, users, for example, say whoever, you know, the family login, will you say, hey, remind me to go do something when I get to the store? Well, whose account is that popping up on? Whose phone is chiming when they get near the grocery store to go get that? So you need to be logged into the right one. I think, it would, I think right it would, you know, just be one account, although, of course, you could always go to an account switcher, you know, just tap your user picture, hit log out, so yeah, that's, ab absolutely. That's but what I mean is that that person who's in there just saying, hey, remind me to go do this would have to be the the same person whose phone or how do I say this? The person that's going to go pick this grocery item up at the store, their phone, the account that used for their phone obviously needs to be the one that they're logged in with on the the refrigerator. <laughs> this is, oh, yeah, this I got you. So which, of course, makes sense, but you may have multiple, you certainly will have multiple people who want to play their favorite show or play their, you know, Pandora app or whatever. And and so that, I think that's really the only wrinkle which uh, could slow this down a little bit. But um, I think... Yeah, I, I really, really, really hope this ends up being a thing that is sold and is a success or something. Because as much as I like to mock dumb internet of things or i don't even know if you'd class this as internet of things because it is a device running full-blown windows not just some stripped down version without a screen i guess it would count but regardless this is a, a computer with a with a very good coolant system <laughs> yes and uh i, I want to see stuff like this happen because you sometimes you just look at an idea and it seems kind of silly but at the same time this is just kind of it's it's like the jetsons man well, it's it's definitely happening. There's already touch interfaces on on um, refrigerators, you know, either LG's back end. Uh, what does LG even call their operating system? I, it doesn't even matter. Or Samsung with TouchFlow, they run that or Tizen on on a fridge. And if they, if they were Apple, they'd just call it Fridge OS, and it would be the most hilarious oh, thing ever. Yes. Yeah, because that's that's not what this is. We don't need better. We don't really need our refrigerator to work better. We we want to have this just be a, a a convenient location to do all kinds of other stuff. I don't need this to have a better fridge. Whoop de doo. I want this because it it is um well I guess what I said in the beginning a good kitchen companion or a good hub you know a family hub. Yeah. Um, that's that's where I see the growth and the power in this thing. Anyways, uh, I think we should move on Sorry. to something else. Okay. So, Have we spent like maybe 10 minutes talking about a fridge? Hey, it's it's we don't get to talk about fridges very often. It, and now my it's, true it's, passion it's cool. can cool. come out. My my uh, my cooling system uh, other hobby, which I've never talked about, which of course actually doesn't proud, exist. Proud to announce that we're going to start fridge power user. <laughs> we just did. It's already. We are now the experts. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Another wonderful thing that I could be cynical about, uh, Double Tap to Wake for the Lumia 950 is still rolling out. Uh, I think that's all I need to say about that. Yeah, although it's uh, rolling out over the air to unlock Lumia 950 XLs in the UK. And uh, it's just, you know, it goes out to different regions at different times, I guess. Yeah. All right, moving on to Xbox. That was that was a yeah. that was a quick one. And yeah. th these next <laughs> couple of ones are quick ones too, which we are getting towards the end of the podcast. So that's fun. Uh, September it's September, and so September's Xbox Live Gold games are here, or rather, games with gold. And for those who don't know, games with gold is a service where if you have Xbox Live, you get some extra games with it each month. This month's games, f for the moment. It's as it switches out halfway through the month. The current ones available are Earthlock Festival of Magic, a game that actually launched today. So you get a brand new, completely brand new game, free with your Xbox Live subscription. 
and the original Forza Horizon, which will work on your Xbox 360 as well as your Xbox One, thanks to backwards compatibility, which it was just added to that yesterday, I believe. And that's nice. You know, you get a brand new game and a critically acclaimed racing game. There's not much to go wrong with there. Nice. Then two out of three on Xbox news today. Titanfall 2's new Titans have been unveiled and detailed. Wait, ever since I wanted, ever since I wrote that headline, I wanted to say it aloud. Nice. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, Titanfall 2, when it was announced, they showed off various new Titans and teasers and trailers, including one sword-wielding mech, which was not in the recent tech test. The tech test contained Scorch and Ion, which... Ion was a robot that was all about lasers, included a cool giant laser cannon. Scorch was all about fire attacks, as you get from the name, and just... To sum it up, really, man, it's a, it's a bunch of giant robots. One of them has a giant sword. You saw You likely saw Pacific Rim, if you're into this. You know where this is going. But, mm, yeah, I mean, it's, it's cool stuff. You can se check out the trailer on the site. It's, it's cool stuff, you know, giant robots in a game with giant robots. All right, I have, I have, I have an interjection and a question here. Okay, a few days ago on Twitter, I saw several different headlines and, and an image showing the new, let's see. Okay, first, let me back up. Yeah, I got to get my terminology right here. Okay, when it comes to Halo, Halo is obviously huge, but there's a little vehicle, like a small rover-type, truck-type vehicle that they're used in there, right? What is that thing? Do you remember? You know what I'm talking about? What is that? Thing oh, yes, I do. Oh, yes, I do. That's not even, a, that's not even truck type, actually. It's a, uh, oh, great time to nerd out. That's okay. But, uh, Bring it on. It's called the, it's called the Warthog. The Warthog. And, and right. what it is, is that it's a military Jeep in the Halo universe that will usually have a turret attached to the back. This is either a traditional turret that fires machine gun bullets, or it's one that fires rockets or what have you. And yeah, thank you for the reminder about this, as I didn't see it, didn't uh, see it when getting stuff for the notes tonight. But that is going to be playable in Forza Horizon 3. Microsoft's had this thing they've done lately, where they have crossed over their video games a lot. Like Killer Instinct has the Arbiter from Halo 2 and onwards. It it also has Gears of War characters. It's got Battle Toads for crying out loud. And uh, yeah, cool. It's it's a neat little crossover that means that I'm basically going to use the Warthog instead of any other car in the game, but regardless. <laughs> nice. It's nice. So that is very interesting, and I'm glad you brought that up. I, I wasn't aware well, of I'm glad that. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> I'm glad you interjected into my interjection. But what, <laughs> what I'm getting at is that this, this Warthog, why well, I, I asked you about it, I guess, this Warthog, which um, is very cool looking, but I saw multiple tweets and you know that that um, that hero image basically saying the new Warthog specs now revealed or something like that. And I looked at it and I th and I thought it was like a prototype from Ford or something. Not that I mean <laughs> not because it, what it looked like, but the way it was presented, it looked obviously very real. Like these things are incredible, uh, the detail and whatever you know CGI of course. Yeah, and it's. I thought it was so incredible that we're there was a news article, and I don't game, so I'm gonna get plenty of crap from people that that feel more strongly about this than I do. That it's a news article about spec, you know, specifications on a fictitious vehicle. Like it doesn't even. I mean, Vernon. No one can Ver, drive Ver, this. Vernon, some <laughs> Vernon, someday you're either going to come down here, and I'm going to show you the the. A glory of Forza or Forza again. I hope I'm saying it right, and uh, just show you how deep this simulation goes. <laughs> okay, and I, you know, yeah. there's plenty. Everyone has their area of of expertise or geek expertise sometimes, and that is fine. There's there's plenty of mine that. is mine mine is being garbage at that. You know, I then, just to. You know, I am a human, okay, just not just uh, critical of everything. I just went to the safety conference for work, obviously, and um, and there were times after the real conference that we were out, you know, at the bar or something, and and just just interacting with the other people that we know or we only see once a year or whatever, 
and we're still talking about work. We're still talking about motivating people to to make good behaviorally safe choices and all these type of things. We, you know, there's plenty of, I geek out too in that regard. So I can't really make fun of people who are thrilled about the warthog um, new specifications, but (laughs) I, uh, I just thought it was very, very interesting. And um, now I've taken up uh, more time on this than I should have. What's the next uh, Xbox? Don't don't worry. Don't worry. Keep us rolling. (laughs) Final, final bit of Xbox news as we are getting a little short on time here. Resident Evil 4 is now on the Xbox One, and that's basically it. It's a classic horror game that was originally released for the Nintendo GameCube and has since been released on any platform, any and every platform under the sun. I think it even got a mobile port, uh, but port, port impressions of the Xbox One version should be coming soon. I can't really make too many guarantees as I've got, like, a lot of stuff to write about for MS Power User. I've got stuff about Battlefield 1, et cetera, et cetera, to get going on. And so only so many hours in a day, and I can only spend so many play, so many uh, playing games even to write about. But, yeah, I should have some impressions of that up there over the weekend. Cool. Yeah. Well, let's finish up with some mobile news here. I thought it was very important that we share that my wife finally, my wife's name is Anna, she finally gave up her Lumia 920, which she's had like three of them. She's been using this phone for like four years, you know, this model, and then occasionally has to be replaced based off of her, I don't know, throwing, you know, dropping it down a set of concrete stairs or whatever. So she has upgraded, quote unquote, upgraded to the Lumia 640. And the reason she had not for quite some time was that she didn't want me to spend any money on it. And I understand that, you know, that's fair. And I'm okay, fine. Well, I was digging through my, my, tech shelf getting rid of some boxes you know everyone keeps the boxes things ship in and we never use them again so i finally got rid of some and i found an extra phone like oh wow and the reason i still had it or have one because when these phones were cheap as dirt which they still kind of are but i think i got a whole bunch of them for 20 bucks i mean like i got half a dozen of these things and um Maybe they were 30 bucks, whatever. And I thought I'd hand them all out. I looked all over. I couldn't find any more of these Lumia 640s. But I, you know, eventually I did. It was still in the packaging. So uh, we set it up and um, whatever, I guess. Uh, there's not really much more to it. My wife is going to miss the dedicated camera button. Some of you folks will know exactly what I'm talking about. Others won't really care. But um, she even asked me, I, I warned her, if you're going to, I need to ask you these questions before we move forward on this. Are you going to be comfortable without having a dedicated camera button? She said, well, how am I going to take pictures? She is. That's one awesome thing about Windows Phone is that they've always had a great dedicated camera button, at least on the higher end models. And, of course, you can take pictures with the snapping on the display. That's how most operating systems do it. But that is, I think that is still one thing that are keeping people with Windows Phone, at least those very few people. And um, I don't know. I guess I don't know what else to add to that. But it was it was, it was, was something in my life that seemed to relate to, um, you know, I guess the listeners. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. So. I think that's a pretty nice note to end the podcast on. I mean, we get to end it on some really positive news there. Well, it's well, fairly positive. It's I guess. fairly positive, depending on some people will. Not, I mean, maybe not even news, but I've. It's, it's a good. It's a good note to end on. <laughs> all right, we'll we'll do that. So, all right. Well, thanks everyone for listening. It was a little bit of a different episode, but I had a great time. And Andy, hopefully, you're not um, too upset with me for like you know just oh, don't, commandeering don't. the show at times. You no, know, no, taking no, it no, off no, into don't the worry. weeds here, but this has been good. Um, make sure you follow MS Power User on Twitter, of course. Uh, you can uh, subscribe to the show. We appreciate that, and that's going to that way you'll have a new show for you and your podcast app as soon as it's available. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter. Andy is at FusionFan45, and I'm on Twitter at Vernon E L. And I should add that Andy has been quite active on Twitter, and I think you've had some very good points. Just kind of generally, I've seen some good conversations with some some uh, I'll just say some uh, Twitter elites. You know, a couple of things with um, Mary Jo Foley and and I forget who else I saw, but um, well, you want well, you want I don't think you saw my conversations. If you if you're seeing Mary Jo Foley and my timeline, 
uh, maybe it was someone else then, but I, yeah. I, I recognize, <laughs> but I, I did, no, but I mean, it, it was you. It was your conversations with some elites. I don't remember who. I thought it was Mary, Mary Joe, maybe it was someone else. Maybe Jez Corden. I don't, I don't know. Okay. Or Zach, or, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I generally don't view people as elites, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, that's probably a great place to end this episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's it. Have a great week, everyone. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.